Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Dr. Kasun Dizoiza, I work for University of Columbus School of Computing. Uh, in this particular lecture, under the Master of Cybersecurity course, uh, which uh, conducted in, by the University of Columbus School of Computing, I'm going to discuss uh, the brief introduction to the open source intelligence. So, open source intelligent refers to intelligent gathering disciplines, and in the open source refers to the information or okay, intelligence available openly. So, intelligent disciplines, there are several intelligent disciplines related to the military purposes, as related to the state intelligence. Uh, so as such, uh, human intelligence, geospatial intelligence, uh, measurements, signal intelligence, uh, technical intelligence, cyber digital intelligence, and maybe financial intelligence. So all those intelligence gathering is very useful uh, and very important for the course of national security, plus for the other purposes. So in this course, and in this introductory lecture, what I would like to discuss, open source intelligence, or in short, OSINT. Open source intelligence refers to uh, the intelligent collection management, collection and management in news, finding, selecting, and acquiring information from publicly available sources. So how do you gather publicly available information for the intelligent purposes or actionable report. In other words, how do you gather information and create an actionable report? So that's what we are going to uh, discuss today. So in order to gather the publicly available information, so we can use several information sources. Nowadays, you know, the best information available source we have right now the internet. So when you say internet, there are uh, 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 there are several internet uh, resources. Uh, so before we discuss the internet uh, resources, we will briefly see the process, uh, intelligent gathering process or in general. So any OS in intelligent gathering, so start from identifying the source. So under that, we need to identify our target. The, our target may be a web server, maybe a organization, or maybe a person. So in this uh, video, I would look, look at uh, persons, not for the technical servers. After we identify the target, so we need to harvest the information, harvesting the information, collecting the information. So those information collections are in the raw format usually. So then we need to process those raw data uh, to extract meaningful information. After we extract the meaningful information, obviously we need to analyze them. We need to plot them. We need to make graphs. We need to kind of find it out the relationships like that. After analyzing those information, so we can finally create our meaningful reports. So as I mentioned, so in this video, I will demonstrate how do you use web as a source of collecting information about different uh, targets. So when you say web, uh, there are three kinds of web we can see, but we call it as surface web, deep web, and dark web. In the surface web is the web we can search uh, for that is actually the web we know it and the deep web it's actually the web behind the access controls the dark web is the web we don't know it's it's it's, it's kind of a hidden uh, web so when you come to the surface web so basically in the surface webs are indexed by search engines google bing or whatever other search engines in the world so this usually surface web, it's 
used for good purposes. Obviously, some people may use for bad purposes, but it's usually for good purposes. Normally, it's secure. And is that a majority? Actually, it's not. The majority of the internet is the deep web. Deep web refers to the internet which is behind the access control. That means if you are logging to your Google account or the Facebook account, the content you get after login are in the deep web. So content you see before login is actually the surface web. So in order to access the deep web, obviously you need to provide the authorization. So it's protected by some kind of authorization. So in, it is secure, usually it's secure relative to the surface web. And researchers says majority of the internet it's the deep web, that is around 94%. Then how about the dark web? In the dark web, we don't know. Everything that is behind us or in movies, we hear in the movies, actually in the dark web, perhaps, usually people use dark web for bad purposes. Obviously it's secure. Is that a majority? We don't know. Maybe nowadays dark web is the majority. The most popular technology we use for create these dark web applications are the Tor networks. In the purpose of open source intelligent gathering, so surface web, deep web, and dark web are very important. So we will start our discussion on surface web. So as I mentioned, surface web is indexed by search engines such as Google, Bing, Yahoo, and so on. So we could use those search engines to gather information. Search engine is a very nice tool where we can use to collect information. So those search engines will reveal important information even though we don't think about. So let's take some example how we can use search engines to collect the information. So collecting specific information from the search engine, especially from Google, we call it as Google Hacking or Google Docs. Uh, Google Hacking or Google Docs, the same thing, explains how do you use Google advanced search parameters to search specific things. So Google has several advanced search parameters. So those parameters explains the Google search or the narrow down Google search further. So by giving those parameters, we can narrow down our results to the target. So for example, let's say I would like to search, I would like to see usernames of particular usernames used by the people in the world for some reasons. So if I want to find those usernames, which is list down on the kind of documents, so we can use the search, uh, uh, Google Docs search, like username, file type PDF. File type refers to the type of the file we are looking for. If you want to look for PDF files, we can use file type colon PDF. So if you want to further restrict this search into the particular site, we can use the site advanced search parameter. So with that site and the file and some keywords, we can narrow down our search to the specific targets. Let's take an example. So I would like to find it out, maybe uh, usernames from Google first. So how do I do that? For that, uh, maybe I will share my browser. Uh, browser window, let's, let's me share it. Uh, this is my uh, browser window, from browser window. So you can see that, I guess. Uh, I share it. 
maybe I share my entire desktop that's convenient for me. Right. So there now you see my uh, browser. So I try uh, some Google Docs or the search. So I say I would like to find user names in the file type. The type is P PDF. Right. So you see the uh, I get all the PDF documents. So those PDF documents may contain a username. Let's say I want to further restrict this search uh, to Sri Lanka. So then I tell the Google, give me the result from all LK websites. So if uh, the keyword is username and the file type is kind of Sri uh, uh, PDF uh, and the sites are Sri Lanka, so you see we get more restricted results. Maybe let's say, in some case, I want to find the national ID numbers from some particular national ID numbers for Sri Lankan users. Maybe I say side Sri Lanka. I want to get uh, some PDF documents which has national ID numbers. So you see, I get several documents. Some of may have those numbers. So maybe I uh, open one of these documents. Uh, so you might see there are some numbers, uh, numbers of particular ID numbers and some uh, person names published. So national ID numbers are supposed to be the confidential information, but uh, some organizations without thinking about that, they have published those numbers on the internet. So by using those numbers, maybe we can find the further information about some person. So let's randomly select one of these numbers. Let's say this number. I want to find it out this person. Uh, maybe more detail about the person, where he lives and so on. Maybe his address, let's say. So I search on this. Uh, okay, so I get some other uh, PDF documents. Uh, maybe in this number available. Let's try one of these documents which I receive to see whether I got, I can find the address of this person. Oh, I can. So you see someone has published the document with the same ID number, uh, with the, uh, with the uh, address. So I search for my interesting ID number. I think it start from somewhere in 999, uh, some ID number. So it should be somewhere, uh, let's see what is the ID number, 8821212099. So I want to find the address of this. Uh, 8121, okay, here, you see. This is the ID number, and this is the same person, and he leaves this address. And uh, since the gender field is zero, he is uh, perhaps a lady. Uh, so if I want to find where he lives, simply, you know, I can use another open source tools available, what we call Google Map. So we go to the map. And maybe I ask the map to locate this address. Uh, let me paste it. Yes, it's located. It's the area. Since this 35 is not uh, recorded uh, at present with this uh, Google uh, Maps, but he, they kind of uh, located the area where she might live. So like that, if I wish, I can search the same number and the same names, perhaps with some other parameters. Like I can say, give me the results of this person or the photo of this person. Maybe, I don't know, maybe I try. Uh, 
on the Google search again. So you know Google has an image search. So we go try this image search. So I get some photos, obviously a set of different photos. Maybe I say I want the photos from uh, Facebook. So I say then site uh, facebook.com. Uh, then maybe uh, I get some photos, but not so important intelligent detail. But I can maybe try something else. Uh, like maybe I can go log into Facebook and search for this name. Uh, so I go to maybe facebook.com and search uh, this name. Uh, Okay, you see there are several uh, names coming up, uh, but I can further narrow down this uh, location because I know this person is from Sri Lanka. Uh, I try maybe, uh, she's from actually somewhere in the middle of Sri Lanka. So maybe I say Sri Lanka. Uh, so they don't give this parameter, let's see, not this. Maybe in generally I say Sri Lanka. Uh, maybe Candy, because the place they live is near to Candy. Uh, not so successful results as you may see, but we can try. Maybe if we uh, select some other targets, perhaps we, we, we can get more successful results or we can fine tune our name like the design icon. So there are so many design icons. Maybe one of them is the uh, target we are looking for. Like that you see, we could use Google search for narrow down uh, or Google search for searching for target, especially in the Google, uh, image, search, image search is very important. Uh, I'll come to the image search next. So no, in addition to this site and find type operators, Google has so many other operators. So like in title, all title, in URL, all URL, like that. So Google has several other operators. Using those operators, we can further narrow down our search. I'm not going to explore all the operators. You can explore them yourself. So let's say we use Google uh, uh, to find email addresses. So in order to find email address, there is a nice uh, and subdomains of uh, interested subdomains. So there is a tool called Harvester. So this Harvester tool can use to find email address over the internet. So they could search all the search engines in the world. So if you only want to search Google, you can use the minus P operator with Google. And with the minus D operator, it says which domain we want to search. With the minus L, you want to search for a particular number of search queries. So let's try this search maybe, this, uh, the Harvester search, uh, to find it out uh, the email address. Uh, of the paper. Uh, uh, so like uh, I will use my terminal uh, and run that. So this harvester will search for the domain cmb.ac.lk with first 500 search queries uh, in executed against Google and get all the documents, scan for the email address and subdomains and give us a report. So using this simple tool, we can search for email addresses and some domains of a particular company or the organizations and so and so. So as you may see, so there are so many subdomain servers, IP addresses is exposed and then uh, names. So like that, there are several other tools available uh, to collect the information over the internet just using search engines. 
as I mentioned, uh, Google has other very nice searching facility that is called search images. In the search images can be used to search images, particular people. And if you know the name, and Google also provide the rivers. If you know the photos, you can upload the photo and find the name of the person as well. Let's try this too. So for example, I go to Google and then maybe uh, image search, uh, Google's, uh, Google image search. Uh, and then I search for my name. So you see there are several photos. Obviously my photos are there and other photos also, similar photos. So if I just want to see the faces of the people, the, we can go advanced search, Google advanced search. It says search for this person, with any size of the image, any race, any type, region maybe from Sri Lanka. Uh, since uh, I know I'm looking for a person from uh, Sri Lanka. And I say image type is the face, right? So advanced search, I search. Okay, you see, I, it, first it is my photos and there are some other photos which link to me if they have uh, sorted out. So it's kind of uh, photos which publish or refers to me kind of things. Uh, so by looking at that uh, result, we can actually identify the person, who is that person and picture of that. Let's say I don't know the name of the person, but I have a photo. So then what we do, we can go for image search. So then uh, we say upload our image, we can choose a file of interest. Uh, maybe I have a file, let's say, uh, in my desktop. Uh, let's say I have a person of interest uh, where I don't know his detail much. I upload that photo and search for him. Okay, I got this result. So you see, his, his, uh, I got some similar photos. Oh, his name is Danish, I mean. So I got a lot of information about him. He works for Fedora and he are running some magazines and I can go further uh, to see, okay. Okay, he has some Facebook accounts, uh, Twitter accounts and things like that. So uh, you can you can find it out his information uh, just uploading the photo, so I get uh, quite useful information about him. So after I get that, let's say I want to uh, do further investigation on him just using open source tools. So the best uh, next best tool source which we can look for uh, the further information is in addition to the Facebook maybe Twitter. In order to gather the information from Twitter, so there is a very useful tool available called Tweetit. Tweet it. So this tool, open source tool, so you can in install that. Using that tool, we can do a advanced search on Twitter. So this tool don't use any Twitter APIs. So it does use uh, publicly available information using just search queries. That tool will gather useful information of particular targets. So this tool can integrate from for your application, plus this tool can use as a command line tool. So it has several commands which you can execute. Using like word searching, you can use tweet minus it and the word you want to search and then usernames who want to search some words in this particular username and so and so. And we can use then search for uh, audience like uh, followers of, and then this particular, some accounts or who is following this person like that. So there are so many useful commands available. Just running one of these commands, we can get information about uh, some targets. So I would like to see, I found that photo is a person called Danishka. I want to see he's kind of talking about uh, freedom. So, so what I should do, I just run, hit it, username, and minus this, the keyword I want to search. 
So then this tool will search on Twitter and return me all the tweets he published with the keyword freedom. So like that, I can search for any keyword. Then let's say I want to find his uh, friends who are the followers of him. So then uh, I can use this command to get these followers. Uh, like that. So I, on the terminal, I use this, tweet it will fetch the followers of Danishka. Uh, so then I can go for those users and maybe further investigate. Or maybe I can check whether what Danishka is following as well. I, I stop the script for a moment and then following also is possible. So like that, this Twitter tool has a lot of uh, useful commands that I just execute on the terminal. It will return the output, actual raw output. So those raw outputs uh, can be put it into a file. Sorry, I, I made a mistake. Uh, uh, minus u and uh, uh, minus following. No space. So hello is. Before a little following minus you this way. So it's hello was worse. Why it didn't work? Sorry, two two dashes. Uh, slash dash following. Right. So these are the people actually Danishka now in uh, following. So like that, I can get any targets and get uh, the useful information just using tools. So we can put those tools uh, data into the analysis because we get the basically we get the raw data from such tools so this raw data can further process later on to analysis on the target so then there are websites uh, which actually uh, provide some information useful information from the twitter one of the sites i saw is called twitter so using open source sites free site you go there and type the username of your interested person and this one will generate a report about all the details summary of this particular person like that there are several tools available open source community to analyze the twitter accounts right now let's move on to the facebook so you know facebook has very uh, very interesting tool called graph search to search on the information available in uh, Facebook. Uh, due to the privacy concerns all over the world, Facebook has cut down the features of graph, uh, graph search from 2014 onwards. And June this year, they have completely shut down this graph search. However, uh, people who are interested in open source information are trying to find it out. Other alternative methods of searching Facebook so fortunately, Facebook also provide advanced searching features where we can use to collect the information. But if you want to kind of uh, get this information and further analyze or get the accurate information, it's interesting to know how Facebook use new uh, searchings. So usually Facebook has, uh, in order to find it out, the search, uh, first of all, you need to log in. Usually people log into the Facebook and they don't log out. So it's already logged in. So then 
uh, if you want to find it out in interesting things, uh, interesting search yourself, direct search queries on the Facebook. So you need to find it out, the particular user's entity ID. So the best way to find it out is you go to the particular page you're interested on, and then right click on and then see the page source and search for entity ID. So then, for example, here's some entity ID of a particular person. Similarly, you can find it out the page ID. So if some it's a location or something like that, or group ID like that. So this ID is important. So if you run a Facebook search, graph search now. Uh, so then there is a very interesting website called CyberTap. I will uh, show you in a minute. So using those uh, simple uh, tools, we can build uh, direct queries onto the graph search still. So right now, after the uh, uh, terminating uh, all, their all graph search, they are now using uh, JSON objects as search filters. So they are searching uh, URL is something like that. They have facebook.com search, and then this one, post or top or whatever, there are several search parameters here. And then after question marks, with the letter Q, we can give what we want to search. So if it is star, we, we, we refer to all. But this star operator may not work with the people right now, but with post it works. And with then this filter in this part, we can embed the searching filter. This searching filter is a JSON object which Facebook can understand, and that is base64 encoded. So you know if, if uh, objects when you submit or retrieve usually we will do encoding and decoding. So if you decode this particular object using this CyberCheck website, I will show you in a minute, you can see such Facebook object. Uh, just an object which Facebook use. It says it's search for a particular author page with the particular name, argument, he give the entity ID. So if you're interested on any entity, so you find the entity ID of target and give that entity ID here, build this JSON, convert it into the base64 and put it in this search query, you get the result. That's how it works. So similarly, so if you want to find uh, some person who educated in a particular university or the school, so this is the JSON object which Facebook used. Say school, name of the school, argument you have to give the page ID of the school. So the, uh, you encode it and find that, put that into the Facebook search. And you say, I want to find people and maybe the people who start from the name letter A, and we say A star. So if you just give star, Facebook reviews uh, in people search, but you can give a letter and then star. So then it returns to all the person who mentioned that he or she attended to this particular school. Similarly, so you can search for people who work for a particular employer. For that, first of all, you have to find the employer ID and then build this search and then search on. Actually, these options are available on the Facebook menus as well. So someone will ask why we, we need to build those queries. Especially we want to build those queries in case we want to execute them in someone else's page. So for example, so if someone else page, we can in embed this URL with the JavaScript and then execute automatically where that script can collect the information about the user. And maybe that bad guys might do that. And similarly, so you can combine those Facebook search queries together. Uh, so like if I want to find the person who works for a particular organization and which educated in particular school, so this is the JSON object with Facebook use. After encoding, this is the uh, URL. You can submit it directly to the Facebook. Facebook give you the result. So let me show you that it works. So for example, I maybe I get this URL here. And I just go there and submit that URL. I already logged into the Facebook. 
So it returns some information. So actually what I search for is the people who work for a company called this and who attended the University of Columbus School of Computing. So the names starting from K, maybe if I want to present uh, the names from A, so these are the persons who attended this UCSC and then work for this com company perhaps. So, sorry, so it didn't get the accurate results because it go to the search menu. So we should not use the menu instead of you can directly change the uh, URL. Like that people start with S perhaps. Right. So actually when you this, this, uh, put this query here, you see Facebook uh, menu option also set for that. Right. So you can use that and directly search for it as well. Obviously, uh, like here, uh, maybe like A, uh, so you might get uh, perhaps same results, but, but not uh, as accurate like running it directly. Uh, so because if you use this menu bar, they give you the first available best option, five or six options, but if you use the uh, query directly, you can get all the results which you get interested. So as I mentioned, uh, there is a website where you can put, uh, get those Facebook search and how, how you, can, uh, you can utilize those search queries. So for example, uh, so that is very interesting website where uh, you can convert these basics for objects. So if you do some Facebook search, and if you see some kind of encoder string like that, uh, here, uh, if, and you want to find it out the filter where Facebook use, and then that filter you can further customize. So what you should do it, you can get this encoded data, and then put it there in this cyber check website as input, and it will decode that encoded URL which used by the Facebook and tell you the JSON object Facebook uses for will pass into his graph search, right? So now, as you may see, Facebook passing JSON objects to the graph search, you can further look for different kind of queries which executed by Facebook on their graph search and decode those strings back and identify the JSON objects and then alter those objects uh, to your purpose. Some people have already done that. Uh, as you may see, uh, so some of the formulas people have identified listed down here. You can search for top post, you can search for post, uh, photos, videos, uh, pages. So you just replace this with this search and you say which category you want to search. And then using Q, you give the key, keywords and using this filter, you build the filter. What kind of filters they use? People have identified, so some people have identified some filters they have already used. So for example, this is the filter for search for city, this is for school, this is for employer, this is for searching for friends, and then this is for groups and this is for particular pages. Uh, similarly, we can search for particular time period as well. So obviously some of these queries, we can try it on the Facebook advanced search pages or search page itself. But building that query, as I repeated, building that query directly and execute them get quite interesting results. Plus we can use those to execute on top of other people's Facebook logins without knowing them. So that is the dangerous part of it. People might build such JavaScripts and then put it as maybe uh, cross-site scripting or some other technologies. They might put those onto the pages. You might visit those pages without knowing those malwares are there. And on the other tabs, you already log into the Facebook. If you already log into the Facebook, with, and then if you visit such malware websites, 
they might execute such advanced queries on Facebook by using your authorization details and collect the information about your friends, about what you posted, about what you do, and so on. So as you may see, gathering the open source intelligence is still possible with even Facebook. All right. We have search, we have actually have a look on surface web. So that is just searching using Google or some other search engine. So we use advanced parameters to demonstrate that. And like Twitter and the Facebook, some of the most of the information are in the deep web because it's after authorization we can get those information. But from there you, you understand even there are tools we can gather the information from the deep web. How about the dark web? Dark web, web we cannot see as you may understood. So since we cannot see the dark web, so most of the information available we cannot retrieve. But I recently noticed there are search engines available to the dark web. One of the search engines I noticed is this. So you can go to this, visit this search engine using the Tor browser. You can use regular browser. If you use regular browser, you cannot go to the interesting places. But you can use Tor browser and visit these search engines and search for the dark web. So there you might find it out the some interesting websites where the criminal activities are going on. So in order to kind of find it out what's going on on the dark web, this initially this tool might be useful. It's up to you to explore that. So other very interesting open source intelligent gathering tool is obviously Google Map. So using Google Map and Earth, we can find it out, the locations, places, organizations, how to go there, and so many useful information. So they are all in public. So in a few years ago, there were no there like uh, there are no sites like that. Now you see. So those most of the important informations which, for intelligent purpose, are freely available. So it's a matter of using those to locate the places locate the building, locate the personal addresses, and things like that, I already demonstrated. So in case you are looking for the phone numbers, so there are websites which provide this facility. One of the interesting websites is TrueCaller. In the TrueCaller apps, most of the people use. So what's happened when you install this TrueCaller app? So the TrueCaller will take all your contact details. So TrueCaller, why do people, why people install this TrueCaller app to get actually or to identify uh, bogus phone calls or identify spam calls? So, however, this app, what they do when you install it, they get access to your contact and upload all the contact details to this TrueCaller website. So, with that, they have collected billions of phone numbers in the world. So, in this phone number database, if you search for any phone number here, so they will tell you most popular nickname of this particular person, not real name, because we are, when you are saving the phone number on your phone, usually you are using a nickname. So then that nicknames, these people know, true caller people knows. So when you give any phone number in the world, perhaps you might get the most popular nickname of this phone owner or number owner. So this true call is also a other interesting tool. You can try it out to find the phone numbers of the people. So even though you don't use true caller, so your number is there. So for example, my number, true caller knows my number, but I don't know, I don't use this true caller. How they got it? Because some of the person who has my number in this contact book are using true caller. So maybe I saw some other interesting websites that are important or interesting to get uh, the useful intelligent information. One is EarthCAN. EarthCAN try to put some webcams all over the world connected each other. So by looking at these camps, maybe you can lively watch video streams on popular places, public parks, and so on. So if you are looking for whether some person attending it or whatever, so you can online watch. And maybe if, how about flights? 
So there are websites which basically uh, uh, show all the flights right now on the sky. So if you want to see the information about flights, flight delays, and the time and the routes where it is landed and things like that. So it's openly available with this flight, flight radar website. So how about ships? So then there are websites, one of the website called marine, marine, marine traffic.com, which uh, plot all the ships, uh, tankers, ships, uh, fish boats, which they can collect the information about. So they collect the information from satellites and then different uh, receivers and upload to this online website where you can trace the movement of the ships, movement of these uh, fish boats, and so and so. So that is another tool. So how about uh, listening the radios in the other countries? So maybe listening the radios, you know, in the shortwave radios go further, but it is the FM or some other radios that may not go for long distance. But there are websites like Radio Garden, which connect most of the radio stations in the world. So if you want to listen any channel in any particular country, you can tune it online using this simple interface and listen that radio and find it out, the information, maybe news, maybe what's happened in this particular country at right now. Similarly, you see there are so many information where we could use to gather the information on public. Maybe I will show you those websites. Uh, so maybe I start from uh, uh, right radar uh, and see how it works. So that's, uh, you might see it's loaded, uh, the flights right now on the sky all the flights kind of in the world. So you can see uh, there are destinations and where they fly from and so on. For example, if you click that, so it says a flight uh, which goes uh, from uh, uh, this information, they say it's not available for this particular flight. Maybe it's kind of military flight. Maybe I press that. Uh, it's a flight from Mali to this destination. It's going on. So if you see that flight, it's some flight uh, which goes from this side, from this particular kind. So maybe slides the flights around Sri Lanka, maybe which this one. Uh, this is uh, the information schedule and estimated arrival and the times, every information, kind of uh, interesting information we can look at. That. Similarly, we can uh, uh, find it out uh, ships. So this is a traffic ship, a ship uh, traffic or maritime traffic right now in the world. So you see, there are so many ships going around in Sri Lanka. Maybe I click one of these, it's a cargo vessel. Uh, and maybe uh, green ones are, uh, I think, cargo vessels. And the red ones are, so let's say enlarge that uh, a bit. Uh, so most of the ship detail updated by satellite information. So you can you can see those little. There are pink ones. Uh, so it's a ship detail where it is from and where it is going to, uh, and time estimations and things like that. So all the details are online available uh, for the people who are interested in on. So maybe I show you this uh, cam. Uh, Uh, so we are, they connected uh, different webcams all over the world in interesting places. So some street live from uh, Dublin Island. So it's a live. So there are people walking around. Uh, you see, they we can identify uh, and like that. 
So this is a live straight view of a. Similarly, we can use straight view. Obviously, you know some straight view uh, videos may be kind of uh, old, but this one is kind of uh, uh, live videos at present live ones. Uh, so similarly, uh, I will uh, show you maybe uh, uh, this one and how it works. Uh, where you will li can listen uh, radios in the world. So this is the radio station in Sri Lanka. So we can like that. So you can listen any 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 radio stations. Maybe if you want to listen to a radio channel in India, you can tune it and listen it. Uh, like that. So listen to Green Radio, 24 hours a day. Like that. So as you may see, so those are very useful for intelligent purposes. So maybe I will show you Truefall. Uh, so if you log into Truefall. And type the phone number. Some phone number. So it says you have to uh, uh, log in. You can use any kind of a uh, name, account name available. So I use one of my Google accounts to log in. So if I logged in with my real, uh, Google accounts, actually they gave all the, my contact details that you have to remember. So then I uh, search for that. So it says Kumudu Miss. So this is uh, some kind of a phone number belongs to uh, this person. So we can, I can find it out who is that number owner. So that is the most uh, popular nickname of him, like that. So as you may see, uh, so we have quite interesting tools, a lot of tools available online. And we could use those tools to gather a lot of information about the people. So that is the question of our privacy. So obviously, so with the internet, we, we kind of using our privacy. There are cameras which we may know, may don't know, and we post a lot of data to the Twitter, Facebook, and so on. So that is available for the people. And the radio stations are available, fishing data is available. Even with the Google traffic, Google knows our cars, location of the cars, and things like that, if you use Google traffic app. But still, we cannot openly search on those cars. Maybe in the future, we can find it out the location of our vehicle as well and location of someone else's vehicles and where their vehicle goes and things like that. So like that, with a lot of online available information, internet information, so this OS in phase are rapidly growing. People are using the internet and the information available on the internet uh, to search interesting targets. So uh, that's what I want to show at the end. So in the people who are interested in application security stuff, so as the University of Columbia School of Computing, we are running a bug bounty program, so which we call it as bug zero. So you can register for bug zero program as researchers and join these bug bounty programs. I invite uh, the people who are interested to join and register for our uh, new bug bounty program. Okay, with that, uh, I can conclude this so sh short lecture, which I show you a lot of useful resources if you are interested in open source intelligence or to gather the information, intelligent information on the web. So the tools I show is only few. So there are thousands of such tools available and the resources available. It's up to you to search on the internet and find those. And then use those tools to find the 
intelligent information. So thank you very much for listening so far. So we will conclude the, this short lecture and we have separate course on open source intelligence and our master of cyber security uh, program so which is run this course is under the fourth semester so in the fourth semester uh, and the master of cyber security open source intelligence course i will discuss in detail how you gather the information in this lecture i only show the tools and after we gather we need to process them we need to analyze them this data and so on. So all those things we'll discuss in detail later on in our open source integration or the voice course, voice in course, which is under our master of cybersecurity program. Uh, thank you very much for listening and we will stop for the day. <laughs>